The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. He's got his glasses back. He's back. We're back. I'm Joey Tyson. I'm officially back. And uh, we took a week off just because there wasn't a whole lot going on. And, you know, with the holiday season, Malik's job's all over the place. I'm all over the place. So we couldn't do anything. Um, so now we have a lot to talk about because, of course, when we miss a week, it seems like everything goes crazy in the sporting world. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, right off the bat, one of the, the the fun topics of the year so far that we've been avoiding for a while. The Pistons suck. Understatement. They are... That, that is an understatement, Joey. They are headed towards historic numbers. Yeah. They are currently on a 24-game losing streak. 24. They started the season 2-1. and one. And they've lost 24 straight. Now, we were hoping to wait to get Chris on to talk about a state of the Pistons thing. But we might have to do that towards the end of the season when we know, like, where they're at and what's going on. Um, but holy crap, it's awful. At this point, if they go, if they win, like, 17 or 18 games, that's an improvement. Yeah. Like, we, it's a positive if they finish with 17 or 18 wins. Yeah. There are tons of people calling for Tom Gores to sell the team. For Troy Weaver to be fired, for Monty Williams being a greedy person, for we're stuck money. with Monty Williams. Yeah, we're stuck. Mm-hmm. Firing, I. Step one is fire is firing Troy Weaver. Yeah, and step two should be Tom Gore selling the team. I feel like Tom isn't going to do it. No, but that's why. I mean, even ESPN is starting to talk about like. Maybe we should force this team to be sold because it seems like Tom Gores. Like we don't even like who's seen Tom Gores lately. He's usually always at the games looking interesting. It's because he knows what he's done. Yeah, and he doesn't want to show his face. Yeah, he knows Listen, he'll get booed out. Can of you imagine? Arena. Can you imagine if Adam Silver had to step in? How embarrassing that would be. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I, I don't. I don't understand how it got here. Yeah. I just don't understand. Yeah, and I don't know if people remember. It's it's already actually been a while since the process happened. And the process, you remember, that Sixers team, I think, lost. They lost on purpose. And they lost 30 for, for, for three or four years, they lost on purpose. Yeah, and they hold the record at like 30 in a row or something like that, I believe. Um, this Pistons team is only six games away. And they're not trying to lose. No, they're still this trying was, to compete. This was a year everybody hoped. That they could compete for a play-in spot, maybe. Yeah. And it's all gone completely 180 upside down. And now they look like a G League team. That's like an understatement, I think. Nah, I'd say this this is what a G League team would look like in the NBA. It's This is what it would look like. It's to the point that I've hit where and it's, it's definitely not Cade's fault. Everybody is expendable to me, except for Jalen Duran. How do you feel? I'd still say Kate. I'd still say Kate isn't. Yeah, I think that's acceptable. He, he is being made to play a brand of basketball that isn't uh, conducive to winning. Yeah, and because of that, he's being made to look worse. Even though he just had his best career game yeah. and looked awesome against the Hawks. Mm-hmm. He's being forced to, like, be Nikola Jokic. Like, to try and be Nikola Jokic or something. Yeah. And just make everything happen or try and be Luka Doncic. Yeah, Mr. Do-It-All. And he's coming off a whole year of not playing, even though he's, in a, like, in the full gear of playing now. Yeah. He had a full year off. He still clearly has to, like, figure out what is what the next, like, 
version of his game is. Yeah. And in that process, this team is just awful. Mm -hmm. Beyond awful. They can't play NBA-level basketball. Yeah. And that's with Monty Williams, an NBA Finals-level coach that has years of experience in this league. Yeah, they are the worst three-point shooting team in the league. They make the least amount of threes in the league, but they also attempt the least amount of threes in the league. Uh, an interesting stat that I heard, if you remember, the Denver Nuggets did win the championship last year. They made and shot the most threes last year, and they are right back up there once again. This is a three-point shooting league nowadays. I don't know if people realize that. But there was also some quotes that came out from Monty Williams saying, oh, we need to spread the floor better. What? We need to... Now you figure that out? Uh, to me, that's concerning. Why is Killian Hayes still being pushed? I don't know. Why? Because apparently everybody hates Jaden Ivey. Well, do you understand? I don't understand the Jaden Ivey situation either. I haven't read much into it because the Pistons are a dumpster fire. Jaden but... Ivey is going to leave this team and go average like 17 or 18 a game. Yeah. On a better team. Mm -hmm. And I when, think... when he gets his confidence back up and gets into a groove. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm okay with if the team needs to make a big move that we trade Cade because I think he's the, he's the guy that holds the most valuable value on this team the most that we can get back in a trade. That's the only reason why I think he's somewhat expendable. Would I rather keep Kid? Yes. But I'm at that point where I'm I'm ready to start over. And that's crazy because we're our, we're in a rebuild and yes. we're gonna have to start it over. Um, but it needs to be from top down this time. And the whole front office needs to be yeah. And and like a lot of people are saying right now too, is the the Pistons have been heavily involved apparently in the trade market looking for a wing I feel like a for wing what? I feel like a wing is the least of our worries and most of the guys that are being suggested are guys that already don't shoot we already have Asar Thompson on this team he's not a shooter he's a defender he's a great skill player but he doesn't he doesn't shoot well and people are talking about oh we're looking to add OG Ananobi He's a what? much better shooter than Nassar, but still. But he's still not. He doesn't help the situation. Right. So I don't know who helps the situation. The only one. <laughs> Unless that, you just got like Steph Curry in here. Yeah. I don't know who's, who helps. The, the only situation. ones that are like sort of interesting. Zach Levine a little bit. I think he would cost too Somebody much. Somebody that can sc score. Yeah. Yes, would help. But yeah. I think Zach Levine would be interesting. Um, but that one I'm more cautious of. I would need the perfect deal to get Zach Levine. Um, the one that I'm actually most intrigued about until they came out and said they want fir five first round picks is Lori Markinen. I think Danny Ainge is a little bit crazy, but he's been known to get picks in the past. So, um, but I think Lori Markinen would be the one that would fit the best, but I just, I don't think we can give up the assets. And finally people are like, apparently teams are interested in beef stew. I'll take him for a cheeseburger. You guys can have them. And give me a cheeseburger back. Or maybe we get our wing stop wings. Since we haven't won a game to get some free wings. I hope everybody knows about that promo. Uh, so My look, entire mood has been ruined with this <laughs> That's why we started. Conversation. That's why we started with this. I just, uh, but I hate it all. I hate it. A team that is known, like all we've known, at least you and I, Chris, not so much. Uh, growing up, is the Pistons winning, being a good franchise, for the most part. When I was first growing up, early, early 90s, first learning about basketball, luckily I didn't know enough. The team wasn't that great. But they were slowly turning into something great. And then they stayed that way for a while. Um, and they just ha they have a winning pedigree as a franchise. And they are in the darkest of days for any NBA franchise. This is, like, historically bad. And we've like thought that most of their picks were pretty decent for the most part. Um, That's the even more puzzling part. The drafting hasn't been bad. Yeah. It's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. The Killian pick was terrible. Yeah. 
Trading away Sadiq Bay was terrible. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, there's been a lot of like weird, questionable moves, and it just it stinks. Yeah, it's it, it's even worse when you see Orlando's figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Houston is figuring it out. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Sam Presti is a like dark wizard mm-hmm. and sold his soul to make every move happen. I don't know how he keeps doing it. I don't want to talk about Sam Presti. He the makes me angry. The Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are, no, are the number out. one pick. Are the number one seed in the NBA. The, the, the Spurs world, suck, but they have Wimby. What world are we living in? That the Timberwolves are the number Listen, one seed in the West. They hit on Anthony Edwards, and he's a dog, the ultimate dog. Yeah. And here the Pistons are. Two and twenty-five, or whatever it is. Yeah. And potentially. I don't know when their next win would be. They're going to play the Jazz coming up. And then they have two games against the Nets, who are 500. And all those teams are middle of the road. Jazz, I think, are 10 and 17. They've kind of skidded after they started pretty good. Nets are 500. And then then they play the Celtics, Raptors, both pretty good teams. Um, And then getting into January, like, they play a lot of good teams in January, and then they don't play the Wizards until January 24th. But they got smacked by the Wizards the last time they played. And the Wizards are no good. There's a chance this team could go like three months without a win. And I don't know how to think about it because I like normally you would, you would say, well, it's the NBA. So you're you're going to get a win eventually. But are they? Like, when are they going to get a win? I don't know. Kate Cunningham just had his career high, and they lost to the Hawks. This is the last time we talk about the Pistons for a long time. Yeah. Until, like I said, until maybe the end of the season, we'll bring Chris on. Uh, maybe we'll talk about them one more time if they do break this this losing streak record. Let's um, hope they get to a respectable tanking team record, and that's all I have to say. The other worst part about all of this there, we talked about it before. There's nobody in this draft class. Well, I, I didn't uh, necessarily agree with that. Okay. I mean, is it just because you haven't paid attention to anybody? Uh, maybe. Or... There's nobody. <laughs> uh, what that, makes you say there's nobody? There's just nobody. There's that, no like, generational guy. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, there's nobody, no generational guy. There's uh, a bunch of talent. There's not a guy that can like ch- turn this franchise around. That I probably I've, not. That I've seen. But also. Uh, just let's let's move on let's move on so i'm done it's just i'm done it's tough it's tough and it stinks because the nba is actually you know doing pretty well right now john morant came back last night hit a game winner however you feel about Ja, whatever um hopefully he can turn it around but i don't know it's 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 annoying but at least on christmas i'll be able to watch some good nba games All right, move over to college basketball. I know this doesn't make your mood a lot better, but maybe a little bit. Maybe there's still some hope in there. Um, Michigan, give us the update. They lost last night in double overtime to Florida. Uh, But how have they been doing? They won at Iowa. Uh, They beat Eastern Michigan at home. Mm -hmm. Things were looking like they were slightly improving. And then they play Florida in uh, the Jordan Classic, and they go back to not playing defense. And the offense is good again. And just more inconsistency. Yeah. They are the definition of a 500 team. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to be just right in the middle once when the season is over. They probably won't make a tournament. And that'll be it. Yeah. Unless they They make some surprise run or something like that. I like the players they have. I like how they play it at certain moments. But it, it just seems like it's never going to be enough. Mm-hmm. They they have to magically hit some type of run or something. Yeah. Because John Beeline isn't on, the, on that sideline to, like, make things work. It's, I, they, they don't have the person. Yeah. They don't have the coach. They just don't. And I don't know when they'll get one, mm-hmm. the right one. Yeah. Because Juwan Howard isn't it. Hmm. That's it. 
Yeah. That's it. It's unfortunate. I don't know. I, I think this team still has the talent that maybe they could get something going. But, yeah, it, it stinks right now. Doesn't look great. Um, on the other side, once again, Michigan State, ah, they're so frustrating, honestly, because I think the last time we talked, they lost to Wisconsin, which was rough. Um, and then they followed that up by losing to Nebraska, which was rough. And then last week, or last Saturday, they knocked off Baylor, the undefeated Baylor Bears, 88-64. to Beat the brakes out of them. Now, Baylor couldn't shoot the, the ball for anything, and Michigan State felt like they couldn't miss. They got a lot of production from everybody in that game. But that's a big momentum game, and then obviously they beat Oakland, unfortunately for you. Um, well, there were, they weren't going to upset Michigan State. It wasn't going to happen. I'll hope for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now they're rolling again, and then they get a breezy matchup against Stony Brook coming up. And then, like I said, they have a be careful game, I guess, against Indiana State just because they're good in their conference. But Indiana State should be. No Indiana State is going to have the best big man in that matchup. <laughs> well, I, I hope think- people are prepared for the big man. I can't remember his name, but he wears goggles and he plays like like a European center. Mm. Like it's all just like post footwork yeah. and high level passing. Okay. It should be entertaining. Is that uh Robbie Avila? Yes. That is who he is. All right. He's big and slow, but the boy can hoop. Yeah. Um well, I mean, basically Michigan State's going to lose a- almost any big man matchup these days. Uh, so I don't, doesn't bother me. Um, and then when they get into January is their big 10 schedule. So we'll find, again, we'll find out a lot about a lot of these teams coming into the the big 10 schedule. But right now, once again, this roller coaster of a team is on the upswing. And the only constant with the team is Tyson Walker. Dude's just a baller. And everybody else on the team, uh, I don't know. I, I can't trust anybody. I can't trust anybody. You know how I feel about A.J. Hoggard. Sure, he he had a good game against uh, Baylor. but Everybody had a good game against Baylor. Well, Malik Hall di- didn't still. Except. So, yeah. Malik Hall, he's he's getting close to the Matty Sissoko boat, unfortunately. At least he can score some points, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else, What do you expect from him at this point? I don't know. What do you expect from this team at this point? I have no idea. That's that's a problem. Like, I feel dumb every time we bring up this team because it's like I can't, I can't figure anybody out. And so it, like, hurts my brain sometimes because they, they don't make any sense. So hopefully come New Year, get in the Big Ten, maybe we'll figure out who they are. Um, but for right now, I guess they're on the up t- uptick, so we'll take it as we can. Um, all right. We got plenty of time to talk about the NFL, which is good because there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of moving parts. But right away, I want to get with picks because it's an important time. Malik, I want all of your Week 16 picks because I'm picking the exact opposite of everything you pick because <laughs> I'm basically lost. <laughs> so you want to know what, what happened? happened last week? It was it was that bad. So last week, oh boy, last week, it stinks because it was a good week for both of us. Um, what is it? One, two. Did we have a full slate? Sixteen games. Yeah. Um, you got fourteen correct picks. <laughs> that is, listen, I'd like to thank the academy. I'd like to thank the NFL. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Lions. Oh god, for having a good season. Fourteen out of sixteen. Yeah. I, hey man, and I got ten. I would say I'm sorry, but I just got. I guess I'm on a heater. I got ten. ten I'm on a heater. Ten normally is is a good day. Um, what two did I get wrong? Uh, you picked Green Bay over Tampa Bay. Okay. And where's the other one? Yeah, I didn't see the Baker Masterclass coming. I'm not gonna lie. This one. Where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's because um where is it? Carolina. 
That's what I was like. Oh, I was looking okay. for a different one, but we okay. both picked Atlanta, of course. And they blew it. And Fire Arthur Smith, please. Fire uh, Arthur Smith and what? What should they do with Desmond Ritter? Like what? Well, they're benching him. He should go to Canada. He's going back to the bench. He should probably go to Canada. Atlanta and New England are weird with their quarterbacks this year. Like start bench, start bench, start bench, whatever. Um, so you're at 131. I'm at 114. So it's basically over. Um, so if you want to make your week 16 picks, I will pick exactly the opposite. So okay. starting off, we have New Orleans at the Rams. <laughs> this is Chris. <laughs> Thursday I, night. Football. I am going to pick the Rams. Yep. Well, I'll take New Orleans. Okay. Uh, the Rams are looking kind of scary right now, to be honest. And a lot of people, I think we mentioned it before. A lot of people are starting to talk about the Rams Lions first round playoff matchup. As fun as the storylines would be, I don't know if I want that. That's like our weakness. Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua against this secondary. I like that the Lions are hot right now, but I, 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 that's who I don't want in the first round of the NFC. It uh, could end up being another game like the Chargers game where it was a shootout. That would be possible. Yeah. Potentially, but I don't want to get in a shootout in the first round of the playoffs. I want to sure. just cruise so we can get to the, the NFC Lions title cruising game. in a playoff game. I know. How would that, man, that would be something to see. Yeah. So that's your Thursday night football. And now we get to have two Saturday games. That's why I was trying to pull up the schedule to remember which days are which. Um, I feel like I'm going to see you cringe as this goes on. <laughs> probably. Because it seems like a several obvious matchups. Yeah. Um, we have the Bengals at the Steelers. I'm picking Cincinnati. Jake Browning <laughs> versus Mason. And you're going with Mason? Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. Hey, man. I'll take it. This one yeah. I feel okay about. I know people are riding high on the Bengals right now, but I don't know. I think the Steelers got one in them. This one, feeling pretty rough. The Bills at the Chargers. I'm taking the Bills. <laughs> and listen, this is car- This is karma. <laughs> from the very, from the beginning of the season. This is karma right here. Oh, man. Go ahead and say those words. <laughs> Brandon Staley is fired. He is. Good. Yes. The Chargers fired. And they fired their GM, too. Yeah. So, but because you decided to stick with this team, guess who you're picking? I'm picking the Chargers. <laughs> the fighting Easton Sticks. Oh, man. <laughs> with no Keenan Allen, probably. All right. Now we got uh, Christmas Eve. We got the Lions at the Vikings. Are you really going to do this? Oh man! I Are you didn't actually think gonna about do it. this? Yep, I'm doing it. Oh no! <laughs> I'm picking the Lions. Okay. No, you know, you know what? I'm gonna help you out here. I'm picking the Vikings. Okay. I'm picking. I'm. I'm giving you this one. All right. I, I don't want. I don't want you to feel that bad. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, Indianapolis at Atlanta. Holy moly! Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Indianapolis is looking really good right now. Actually, at the right time. Shane Steichen. Yeah. Doing a really good job calling plays. Maybe the Eagles should have tried to keep him. Uh, Seattle at Tennessee. Man, Will this Levis is a got weird one. beat up. Seattle at Tennessee. Drew Locke with a big career win. You know, yeah, I'm going with the, the backpack man, <laughs> Drew Locke. That's what I'm going with. Okay. I'll go with Mayonnaise Boy. Actually, he might not play in this game, I heard. It might be Ryan Tannehill. I bet that makes you feel better. <laughs> In, indifferent, I think is the word. <laughs> um, how did I miss? Oh, I scrolled up past them. Uh, Washington at the Jets. Ew. Gosh, this is ugly. That is really ugly. Uh, Zach Wilson might be back for this game. Maybe that helps. I, I don't know. I'm going with the Jets. Is is Sam Howell benched? I don't know. They brought in Jacoby Brissett at the end of the game, and they made a big comeback on the Rams and almost had a chance. I'm going with New York. Okay. Washington, that feels okay. Green Bay at Carolina. Gross. Green Bay. Green Bay is also going backwards a little bit, but Carolina. Jordan holds. Love still played well. Their defense is just yeah terrible. Uh, Cleveland at Houston. I think Houston is getting C.J. Stroud back. But I am picking Cleveland because they got some type of magic going on right now. That's right. And Joe Flacco is... Just making things happen. Respect the former Super Bowl MVP, Joe Flacco. I have to. I have to. Uh, Jacksonville at Tampa Bay. This may, I think this game could be interesting. Good. Actually. 
Jacksonville's kind of looked like a mess lately. Tampa Bay, though, do you trust Baker Mayfield to continue this? I'm going Tampa. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll take Jacksonville. Uh, Arizona at Chicago. Another ugly one. Give me Chicago. Yeah, do you they, think they almost beat a good Cleveland team? Are you in the majority of trading Justin Fields? For what? I don't know. That that's what it depends. Like, well, would you rather have him? Justin Fields or possible Caleb Williams or Drake May, Jaden Daniels? Because they're gonna get they can get a top quarterback. Those other options do sound more intriguing. But I, you need to get something good if you're trading Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Like some picks, some more picks, or a good young prospect. It depends. But I understand what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Dallas at Miami. It's a big game, too. Dallas kind of backpedaling a little bit. Miami. All right. I'm going with the Finns. No idea what the status of Tyreek Hill will be. I think people expect that he'll be back for this game. Um, but that could be a fun game. Um, unfortunately, the nightcap is New England at Denver. So Denver, go to bed early. Make sure you get to bed. Uh, put out those cookies for Santa, and uh, you'll be good to go. I'll be on Christmas break away from school, so I might make myself suffer and just sit through this. God. I might. I or I might, I might just make myself a drink and fall asleep halfway through. I will not be watching this game. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, and then. We have Christmas Day NFL games. We do. Are you more excited for the NFL slate or the NBA slate on Christmas Day? Because this is a new I'm thing. I'm excited for the NFL game at the end of the night, but mm-hmm. the NBA games, that's what we're here for. Christmas and NBA is synonymous. Yeah, I was going to say. Not I, really watching football until the end of the day. Yeah, especially when you look at the matchups for the NBA. You got Bucks knicks at noon. Warriors Nuggets at 2.30, Celtics Lakers at 5, yeah. Sixers Heat at 8. And then it's perfect because the nightcap is Mavericks Suns. Ah, that's not that exciting, actually. Yeah, not anymore. And Sixers Heat, I don't love. That's when I'll also be Sixers watching. Sixers Heat will be good. It should be, but yeah. at that point, I'll be. You can't pass up this NFL game. Listen, who isn't excited to see Jaime Hawkins on Christmas? The gift he's that keeps been, on giving. He's been playing really good for them. Yes. Um, but anyway, football games. We got Vegas at Kansas City at 1 o'clock on Christmas Day. Uh, Shouts out to Kadarius Tony and his uh, no hands. Maybe somebody will get him some hands for Christmas. I've never seen um, Patrick Mahomes get so upset the last couple weeks. He saw... Uh, he was overdoing it against Buffalo. Kadarius, another drop. Sky Moore, another fumble. Travis Kelsey, another drop touchdown. I forgot Sky Moore existed. Yeah. He's not done anything for this Listen, team. Do you think Antonio Pierce gets the team for for Christmas? You think they just give him the the, the Raiders? He becomes. I think coach? it would be fun. I feel like the Raiders should after they they botched the Rich Passaccia um, yeah. tenure. Maybe, but well, I guess they're gonna get a good draft pick. So I feel Listen, I kind of feel bad for Aiden O'Connell because I seriously doubt Aiden O'Connell outduels Pat Mahomes. Yeah. In Kansas City on Christmas, I'm going KC. Yeah. Which means you believe in Aiden O'Connell. I definitely believe in Aiden O'Connell. Yes. Devontae Adams, maybe Josh Jacobs will be back. Max Crosby on Christmas. This sucks. Uh, <laughs> um, and then our middle game, we got Tommy DeVito at Philadelphia. Listen, John Stellato is the, one of the biggest Italian stereotypes I've ever seen in my Jeez. life. His agent. Yeah. That suit he wore, like what are we doing? Yeah. Uh it's it's absurd, but I love it. Yep. And they're playing at Philly in the afternoon. Philadelphia's on a three-game losing streak. The Lions have a chance to get the number 2 seed. I'm not going to say they have a chance to get the number 1 seed, but if San Francisco loses, then they have a chance. The Eagles aren't losing four straight. Are you sure? But about you that? believe in Tommy DeVito, so it's possible. Yeah. It is possible. Saquon Barkley, Darren Waller's back. You know, the. Listen, Christmas miracles happen. 
those guys Perfect. that they have, you know, Wando those Robinson. Guys. I like I like how you just yeah. had to go with those guys. No, I know a lot of their disrespecting players. Darius Slayton like that. How yeah. dare you? Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, Jalen Hyatt, Isaiah yeah. Hodgins. Now you remember that. That's names. a squad right there. Now you remember Saquon Barkley. You said his name already. Matt Bar- Matt Breida. You were about to say Matt Barkley. Let's move on. <laughs> go, go to the night game. You, you're disrespectful. Okay, the game that everybody is actually actually excited for. Potential Super Bowl matchup here. We got the two yeah. top teams. Rematch from 2011? Was that the year they played in the Super 12? I I can't remember which year it was. Is that the, the Kaepernick Super Bowl? Yeah, when, when Beyonce put the lights out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, it was someone around there that time. But, uh, yeah, Lamar Jackson versus Brock Purdy, two of the – Well, Brock Purdy's definitely the underrated quarterback. Lamar Jackson is like the overlooked quarterback, I feel like, a lot of the time. People like to look, disrespect Lamar a lot. Yeah, because he doesn't put up the flashy numbers. But when you they watch win. him, he puts up the flashy plays. Yeah, um, uh, he, he has turned the ball over too much sometimes. He fumbles but, a lot. He fumbles yeah. is a problem. But um, they're just a solid team. Both of these teams are super solid. More than solid. They're really good. Yeah. Right now, Brock Purdy is the odds-on favorite to win MVP. Which I agree with him when he says Christian McCaffrey should be yeah. even more like yeah, McCaffrey, more spotlight than him. McCaffrey is showing again why he's just one of the best players in the NFL. Yeah, it's insane. Um, I don't know. I bet on McCaffrey to win Super Bowl MVP, or not Super Bowl, the MVP. So hopefully he wins. But um. Who you got in this game? Because I, I would like to still rock with my team. If it was in Baltimore, I would have taken the Ravens. That's fair. But it's in San Fran. Brock Purdy prime time. He's going to want to prove a point. Mm-hmm. He's going to be clean, precise like he usually has been. He's going to hit Ayuk. He's going to hit mm-hmm. Debo. And Christian McCaffrey will yep. break off a few big plays. San Francisco wins. Yeah. I'm hoping for a, a, a happy birthday Baltimore win on Christmas night. That would be pretty sweet. I hope this game not necessarily shoots out, but I just hope it's close. I hope it's exciting um, because San Francisco has been just blowing people out. Yeah. And on Baltimore a little bit too lately. Um, so, I don't know. It should be interesting. Both teams, like San Francisco is hard to defend, but Baltimore is just, they're good on defense. They slow the pace down a lot for teams. I think make them uncomfortable. So either I want this to be like somewhat of a shootout or I wouldn't mind this being like an old school defensive battle. I don't think it's going to be because (laughs) San Francisco's weapons are a little too crazy, but you never know. You never know. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a week 16 slate. Um, But we have plenty of time, so I wanted to talk more about the Lions and where they're at right now because they're getting in, in in crazy territory again. They're sitting at 10 and 4. The last time that they were 10 and 4 oh, I can't remember if it was that 93 season or whenever it was. Um I hate to I'm probably wrong, but somewhere around there. Basically the last time since they won the division. Haven't won the division in 30 years. Technically have never won the north, right? It was the NFC Central when they won. Yes. So they have never won. This will be their first the NFC, NFC North title. North. All they have to do is beat Minnesota this weekend to lock up the title because Minnesota, Green Bay, and Chicago all lost last weekend. It was the perfect storm for the Lions. Plus, like we mentioned, both Dallas and the Eagles lost. The Lions have a chance to go to Dallas. So and there's a chance. If they go to Dallas, they could be the number two seed. Not just if they go to Dallas. They have win. to win in Dallas. Win in Dallas. Go to if Dallas Lions and win. take a road trip to Dallas. <laughs> if they just go to Dallas, <laughs> they'll make it. Um, and then, like I said, Monday night, if Baltimore wins, the Lions could then go to Dallas, win, and be tied for the number one seed. In the NFC. I don't know what type of universe we'd be living in if that happened. 
I'd almost be afraid that it'd be the end of time. Yeah. And that's probably Lions number one seed. Probably what the 49ers' that? last chance to lose because they play the Commanders and the Rams to end the season. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe the Rams could get them. Just one of those weird games. But, um, yeah. I'm really pulling but for the Lions. This right game now. is important. Yeah, it is. Take care of business. Yeah, don't mess around with Minnesota. We know they're still decent. Nick Mullins, a lot of people thought that Nick Mullins was going to be awful for them. I was like, well, he's been in the league for a while. He knows what he's doing. He's not the greatest quarterback, not even the greatest backup, but he's good enough to get you a win, especially when you have Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of good guys. Um, the nice thing is Minnesota plays in a dome. We're not going to be playing outside in the exactly. cold. Um, Advantage Lions. So the Lions, their last three games, all in the dome. They get to play Minnesota for the division. Hopefully they'll be amped up and they'll be able to just cruise. Dallas is going to be a primetime game. And then they play Minnesota at home to end the season. Like, There's a chance. There's a chance. 13-4. and four. It's not... It's not undoable. If they win the next two games, do you sit starters in the last game? That's the problem. They might not be able to because they might want that number one seed. True. Um, if I would say if the number one seed is off the table, then yes. But at the same time, with Dallas also being 10-4, and four, who does Dallas have the rest of their schedule? Um... They have Miami this week, like we talked about. So they could lose that game. Then they have the Commanders, their last game of the season. Big whoop. Uh, so they'll win that game. But they could go one and two and then not have to compete against the Cowboys for the second seed. And the Eagles, where are we at? Ugh. Eagles have Giants, Cardinals, Giants. That's going to be tough. So... That's the problem. They might be fighting for seeding no matter what. Yeah. So it stinks because you'd like to rest your starters, but I don't I don't know if I would because I think that number two seed, like home field advantage, is so important for the, for especially for the Lions. Um and if it, it stops Dallas, Dallas is the same problem. They're really bad on the road, really good at home. So if you can get home field advantage away from Dallas as well. I think that would be pretty good. Plus, right. then you're on the other side of the bracket from San Francisco. Like, I think there's a lot of good things about being the number two seed. So, we'll see how it plays out. Um, but, yes, rest your starters if possible. But if yeah. it's for seeding, I'd be hard-pressed to. Okay. I, I want to ask you two questions before we go. Okay. We got plenty of time, so okay. don't worry about it. So, first, I want to ask, so far in this season, what – has been the most encouraging slash most surprising thing and then second what still gives you some pause and some red flags so first like a big positive of the season and second what still scares you hmm i think the big positive is easily the rookies okay um, I would say more specifically, Jameer Gibbs. Because I really because of the because of the draft pick position. Not even that. Like I'm okay. I was okay with the pick. I just didn't think he'd be this good. Like he's leading. I, I thought he could. He's leading the league in yards per carry. He's leading the league in the league in uh, uh rushes of twenty plus yards. Yeah, ahead of Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Um, he's averaging like 5.3 yards a carry. Um, he's just looked dynamic. And I think like the craziest thing my brother and I were talking about is like, he's able to break tackles too. Like he's, he's not the biggest guy out there, but he's just really good at shedding tackles. He just has a knack for it somehow. And I thought that they would have still leaned on David Montgomery a little bit more than Gibbs. But these last couple games, they've given him a lot of the reins. I like that David Montgomery hasn't gone away because I think it's a great one-two punch. But I'm just 
I'm kind of surprised and impressed at the same time of how well he's done in this role. Um, and his efficiency numbers are off the charts, which I assume like next year probably goes down a little bit. Like you just can't, you can't expect somebody to do this uh, year in and year out, but I'm going to ride the wave while I can. And even Jamison Williams has started to look better. They gave him like what, six targets or something in this last game. They threw a couple screens to him. Didn't work out, but like they're getting him more involved. Jared Goff seems to trust him more. Um, I think Sam Laporta was the one that I didn't really see having a problem coming in. It's now, still he's, shocking. That yeah, he's still he's been, basically a top five tight end. <laughs> yeah, he's still been way better than I ever yeah. thought, but he's the least surprising out of those guys. Um, so the rookies obviously are kind of the, the name of the game. Um, I think, too, the, the offensive line, like we knew they were one of the best offensive lines going into it, but I didn't think that like – we saw when one guy got hurt, like Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, when one of those guys goes out, the offensive line struggles. Like, their depth isn't as good as maybe we thought. But, man, they're 5-0 and when they've played together, that offensive yeah. line. And they're just so much better. Um, so that's cool to see. Another one is they're 5-0 and in primetime games, which is huge. Like, they're getting on TV and showing why they get to be on TV. Lions fans, we hardly see them on prime yeah. time. So being able to see them on prime time is amazing. Not only are they on prime time, but they're winning on prime time. Listen, I, I remember in 2010 <clears throat> when the Lions played the Bears on Monday Night Football, and it was like yeah, I was still a Lions fan at that time, a big Lions fan. Mm-hmm. And to me, that felt like one of the biggest games in Lions history Yeah, <laughs> when they played like prime time mm-hmm. and there was like a feeling that like the young Lions with Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson are like on the rise Yep, and they won that game mm-hmm. and it was like big. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild seeing them be five and on prime time games after all those years. Yeah. Um, any other surprises? <sighs> Not necessarily. I think everything else kind of fits. Um, I guess the downfalls. Obviously, the quarterback pressure is frustrating. Yeah, Can't get it. They've done better lately. And then, obviously, I'm more concerned about the secondary. I think C.J. Gardner-Johnson will help just be able to mentor those younger guys, be on the field as a field uh, captain, basically. Um, so I'm hoping that that helps. Um. Yeah, the the cornerbacks are a bit suspect at times. Cam Sutton, I, I've noticed that like sometimes he just can lock people down, and then it seems like other times he gets lost out there, which I guess is that's kind of the position. It happens a lot. Um, Jerry Jacobs kind of the same way, but more to a <laughs> more extreme. Yeah, but um, he's made some good plays here and there. Uh, I really loved uh. Ifitu Melifonwu last week, that like safety blitz that caused Russell Wilson to fumble, and we almost saw a Sean Rogers type play out of Isaiah Bucks, but um, that was cool to see a safety blitz like that. Melifonwu played well, but uh, the secondary is just a, it's it's concerning, um, because you look at a lot of these top teams, San Francisco's got Debo, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. How does our secondary hold those guys? Philadelphia's got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard back. How do we stop those guys? Dallas has got C.D. Lamb. Brandon Cooks has kind of had a, had a little bit of a revival. Um, I guess Dallas, I don't care about their uh, pass catchers as much. And then um, some of the other little teams, like Seattle, obviously we have a problem with Seattle. Like I said, with the Rams, Cooper Cup, and Puka Nakua. Like, those teams are just a little bit scary because of our secondary. The good news is our defense has been playing better when they're not on the field as much. So hopefully, if the offensive line can stay healthy, slow the pace down, and then the defense isn't on the field as much, so then they can make big plays when they need to, have a little bit more energy. I think they're just getting worn out, to be honest. And they've been put in bad positions. So hopefully they can turn it around. I don't know. But I'm excited about this team and potentially making a run in the playoffs. Like, not 
I like I'm at the point, I don't know if you are, but like I'm not at the I'm at the point where I think we could win two games. I think we can make the NFC title game. Then we'd probably play the 49ers. Then you got an argument. I, that'd be tough. Well, if if they win the division, don't you get a first round by if you win the if you it's, win your division? It's only the first. It's only the, I forgot only the you have to be you have to play a wild card because there's yeah. there's there's you have to four, play a wild card there's team. fourteen teams now. Yeah, I yeah. forgot. So you get one bye for each top seed, and then yeah. the rest is mm-hmm. the three games. So yeah, I I don't know. The Lions in an NFC Championship game. This That's crazy, right? Would burn to the ground. <laughs> yeah, it just just seeing all the people in the streets, it would be chaos. Mm-hmm. Imagine Absolute that. I, like I don't know where the bracket lines up, but. As much as I said I would hate to play the Rams in the first round, imagine this run. The Lions get, like, the number two seed. Again, I don't know how the bracket would play out. The Lions get the number two seed, have to play the Rams the Rams in the first round. They beat the Rams, beating Matthew Stafford in Detroit. Great storyline there. Then, imagine in the second round, they got to play somebody like Dallas. Dallas one of those teams that knocked us off in the playoffs multiple years ago. We beat Dallas. Basically the reason I stopped being a a full-time Lions fan. Yeah. That loss. Yeah. Uh, One of the brutal playoff losses the Lions have had. Beat Dallas to get to an NFC title game. Man. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then, I'm not guaranteeing anything or saying that we even have a chance, but by the crazy chance that that run – gets us to win the NFC title and go to the Super Bowl. We just knocked off the 49ers, the number one team for many people in the NFL. If they knock off the 49ers, I'm put, <laughs> I'm putting so much money on the Lions winning the Super Bowl. If they if they make it to the Super Bowl, they are winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I will say that right <laughs> now. I am putting m- money on the Lions <laughs> if they make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. There's no way they lose if they make it. Yeah. Imagine... The football nation oh my. behind the lines at that point. Again, I know we're yeah. talking a little bit crazy, but it's fun to be able to do that. Like we yeah. have the, the op- fact the fact that you can actually right. visualize yeah. the Lions in even a conference championship game <laughs> right. means great things are happening. Yeah. Like it's fun that we can even think no, about the yeah. idea. No, they, we we have to see them handle business this week. Like oh, you yeah. said. Definitely. Yeah. And like I said, it, this just makes the Dallas game even bigger. So I'm I'm excited. See, we're getting too excited. We're d- this we're Lions too- talk is knocking things off in we're the atmosphere. Crazy. We're too crazy. <laughs> the camera can't handle it anymore. Um, but yeah, it, it's fun times in the NFL. We haven't had <laughs> we haven't had this in a long time, and I guess we yeah. sacrificed those Pistons for it. That I feel like the, the Pistons and Lions <laughs> cannot be good at the same time. Yeah, apparently. it's impossible. Apparently Listen, not. those Stafford and Calvin years when they were. Just getting into the playoffs. Yeah. The Pistons, terrible. That was the start of the Absolutely Andre terrible. Drummond, Josh Smith era. So. Yeah. Yeah, maybe there's maybe there's a correlation. One there. has to be an embarrassment for the other to thrive for some reason. Gosh. Why can't it be like the Celtics and the like Patriots during the... I don't know. Uh, yeah, it would be nice. Some cities just can't be blessed enough. Yeah. Oh, well. Forget Boston. <laughs> Screw them. <laughs> Screw them. And I used to be a Red Sox fan. Oh, man. That's a terrible mistake. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's good times. Um, next week, we have to preview all of the college football games because it's that time of the year yeah. where we'll talk about everything. Playoffs. There's some good bowl games. We kind of mentioned them a I couple weeks ago. I guess I have ago. to actually make do a preview for the Michigan Valley game. <laughs> I actually have to talk about it. Yeah, you have instead to. of just saying there's no we we I can't talk. They just yeah. have to prove it. Mm-hmm. I have to say a few more words than that. Mm-hmm. It's fun times in sports. Like I don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much because we'll save it for next week. But like we're we're having all this fun, crazy talk about the Lions. But you can do the same thing with Michigan. Like knocking off Alabama to go to the college football championship would be pretty insane. It would. So there, there's a chance for it. 
there's a chance for it. So we'll see. Like I said, there's a lot of good bowl games. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about some of the transfers when we talk about some of those uh, bowl games because there's those Ducks. We got to talk about those Ducks because they made some moves. Yeah. And uh, it's scary times for the the Big Ten should the be big, afraid. The Big 20. The Big whatever. <laughs> yeah. They got to figure out. We got to figure out. A the name. Big Conference. <laughs> Pretty much. Even though there's a Big 12 also, but yeah. Yeah. The um, the Big Pac-20. There we go. <laughs> the Big Pac-20. Sounds about right. Sounds about right to me. Because it can't be the Pac-10. Uh, you know, it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. All righty. College football previews next week. Um, we'll talk about more NFL, too. Um, maybe sprinkle an NBA. We can do a little update on, because we're getting close to the midway of the season. We'll just forget about the that other team. They don't count. They're a G League team. But uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time. Tom Gores needs to be in an AA meeting and not owning a NBA team.